All right, now we're at the point of ethical decision making. Now, all the stuff we talked about before, all the reading you've done, should now apply here. We're going to be giving, I'll give you a scenario, and I didn't, I'm going to work with you and walk you through each of the steps. And at the end, I have an assignment that you will complete and turn into the Dropbox and also go in for discussion. So we're going to talk about the scenario. Now, let me give you a little background. For years, I taught this a course called Ethical Decision Making. And it was for the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension in their management tra uh, training program. It was a two-day course, and just like this course, we taught theory through, for most of the first day. And then they had an assignment, very similar to what we're going to do here, but their assignment was to take a real-life case, something that affect them, something that's real and that they're familiar with or directly involved, and work up just like you're going to see this form. And the next day, come back, get into groups, and each of you present it, and then each of you inquire and then we go through the process and what happened, and then they present it in the full group. What we're doing here is very similar. I'm going to give you a scenario, but there's a, but there's a big assignment in this class, and it's really based on you're going to have to go out, you're going to have to identify an ethical dilemma, and I have to approve it. Then you have to go out and you have to interview two practitioners from like line officers and two supervisors higher level than uh, sergeant and present the dilemma and get their input. I have a series of questions and then you're going to step by step answer the questions on the theories and everything we've talked about. That is a major part of this program. Right now I want to walk you through an example of an ethical dilemma. This example came actually from a real one from one of our students. The story, the scenario is, you are in your patrol car and you're talking to another officer in another patrol car facing the other way. As you're visiting and talking, a car drives by of minorities, young black males. Your partner says, got to go, takes after them. Now, I want to make it clear because some of you are going to try to rationalize and justify. This is racial profiling. I want no misunderstanding. I don't want, well, maybe they did something. Maybe there's a furtive action or maybe something. No, this is racial profiling. The, as he explained, your partner does it all the time. Shake, but people, he stops minorities, shakes them down, and sometimes he's right. And a lot of times he's not right. So he takes off and he pulls the car over, gets them all out of the car. They run checks on the people in the car, and there's one of them wanted for a violent, violent crime. I believe it was a robbery. And, and this guy's, everybody's looking for him. They arrest the guy. The officer becomes a hero. What's the problem? Well, the officer, as telling the story, he said, the problem is, is this guy racially profiles all the time. Now, what do you do? Do I report him? Then what happens? You know, he was treated like a hero. He got this guy. He got this terrible person off the street. He made things safe. Other people looked up to him. Young officers thought he was great. You want to be just like this guy. He, I don't know if he got an award, but it sounded like he might at least got accommodation verbally, but maybe even more from getting this guy, you know, and writing up, as we call the golden pen, this unbelievable report on what was the probable cause for his stop. But this officer who's presenting it, it always bothered him because it was no different than a lot of times on how we treated people. Taking this scenario, we're going to walk through the whole process. Now, the first part of the process, we're going to talk about your values. What do you stand for? And, and we'll take a look at it. And then the next steps is going to actually step by step walking through how to evaluate an ethical dilemma. Remember, our really goal in this class is for you to develop the skills when confronted with a dilemma that you can evaluate and determine the consequences or possible consequences rather than act instinctively. That's where you get in trouble. Ethical decision making. Step one, guiding values. Now we're going to look at what is yours and what is your organization and if they're in conflict. What is your mission in your organization? What do they say? Or what is the real norms? So first I'd like those in law enforcement or those that not in law enforcement, look at a law enforcement agency or a correction agency or, or one you know of or if you don't work in, and what is their mission statement? What do they claim they stand for? Next I want you to identify the formal declared operating principles or norms. Here's what they say and here's what they formally claim. Now, I want you to identify the informal. What is the reality? 
you know, don't, don't bring me problems, uh, cover up this, don't embarrass the agency. What is the reality where you work? Or if you don't work there, then talk to somebody else that does work. And pick the area you'd like to work in. Hopefully, you're, if you're a licensed police officer, if you're not, you know, take a look at, find an agency and talk to them. And then list the priority, significance, you know, your personal values. All right, so values. Let's take a look what? These are his distinguishing characteristics. These are what you stand for. These are the principles, the guiding lights, the moral nature, guiding beliefs. And here's an example of some of them you might pick from. Take a look at these, and I want you to pick the five in the order that you think are most important to you and what you stand for. Take a look at them. What do they really stand for? What principles are behind them? You know, as you look at them, in other words, loyalty, what does it mean? Uh, honesty, what does it mean? Family, what does it mean? Take a look at it. Uh, look at the golden mean we talked about. Put it back up. Are these values, when you look at the principles, where is it? In other words, don't just say, I believe in, as we I use the example, loyalty. What, did that, what does it mean? So look at them and try to come up with principles. What do these values stand for? So what are the values? Identify at least five of these values and develop a principle that identifies the meaning. So I want you to identify the value, and then what does it mean to you? We're trying to get an assessment, really working on your personal mission statement. Who are you and what do you stand for? What do you believe you stand for? What should you stand for? Values. They're filters on how we see the world. They're filters on right and wrong. They generate generation building, individual. You know, there's standards of behavior. You know, they help in conflict resolution when you identify what you stand for. Now, why is this important to you? Because as you face ethical dilemmas, the more you know what you stand for, and very important, the more other people know what you stand for, the less dilemmas you're going to find yourself in. You may not be invited to the pig roast, but maybe you don't want to go. You know, it's, it's to say, I won't lie, and I won't lie in a report, and I'm not willing to lie, and be clear on it will save you a lot of grief in your career when you know what you stand for and you're willing to articulate and let others. Now some of you think, and then I'll be all by myself, there are so many people just like you out there that has high standards and they may not be so vocal, but they will find you when people realize what you stand for. You know, so we look at the core ethical values. I'm using a, from a, another speaker talking about what they are, you know, truthfulness, responsibility, justice and fairness, caring, and civil virtue and citizenship are as the core values as we look at some of them identified. So with that, now this is the first part was you. Take some time. Who are you? What do you stand for? It's very important. Now we're going to take a look. Let's look at the scenario we have. So we're going to identify, explain the situation, and get the critical facts. What we're looking at here is I want you to List the facts of this case. Take this case apart, every piece of it. That's the first step. What are the critical facts? You know, what are the facts involved in here? Not the ethical dilemma. We're going to separate the morally relevant facts as we go along. So what are the facts of the case? Listen, hypothetically, uh, you're in a car, a car drives by, uh, stops the car, the guy's wanted for a crime. Just list all the facts, minority, uh, list uh, everything and do with the case. Now from that, we're going to separate and pull out what are the morally relevant facts. In other words, why is this an ethical dilemma at all? Uh, you pull somebody over, they're guilty of a crime. Is there an ethical dilemma? No. Uh, if somebody else pulls somebody over and they didn't do anything, they're being stopped, that's, pretty, that's wrong. So why is there, the ethical dilemma, by the way, is not, so you understand where we're going, is not the officer that stopped them. He's blatantly ro racially profiling. The ethical dilemma we're talking about is you, the officer that witnessed this. What do you do? So what is keeping you from telling the truth? Why is it you're not just jumping forward and saying, listen, they did nothing wrong, they shouldn't have been stopped? So what are the facts, the morally relevant facts, the facts that if they didn't exist, we would have no ethical dilemma at all? What are they? And I want you to list them. He's your partner. He's a police officer. Uh, people are, uh, he got the bad guy, bad guy off the street. 
you know, uh, what are the facts? And the key one in here is he's a fellow police officer and he's your partner. If he was not your partner or a police officer that did this, would you have a problem when you're asked to tell the truth to tell the truth? You know, we're going to look at other ethical dilemmas, everything from domestic abuse to driving drunk to accidents and to other crimes and not crimes. And what keeps you from telling the truth and standing up and being heard is a lot of times going to go back to that word loyalty. And in reality, it's not loyalty. And let me explain why. Uh, you pull somebody over, they're speeding. Speeding's not a, I don't care if you give a ticket, remember? They're speeding through at a high rate of speed, you pull them over. And then I'll ask, why didn't you give a ticket? I, I do this in classes all the time, and people say, well, they're trained to drive fast. Well, yeah, right. Uh, how about, uh, we have a code of silence, you know. Reality, should you give this person a ticket? Yeah, why don't you? Well, you know what will happen if I do? People will be mad at me. They'll treat me different. So the issue is not that you agree with their behavior, but you're scared to do what you believe is right because of the consequences you would follow. You know, So there becomes the issue. A lot of times, the, it isn't that you really believe in they have a right to speed or that they have a right to drive drunk or have open bottles in their car. You don't believe that at all, but you are in fear of the consequences of doing what you believe, and that becomes the issue. So what are the morally relevant facts that keep you from doing what you believe is the right thing? We're gonna, so I want you to list them and, and, and just brainstorm with them. Then we're going to look at ethical decision making. Step four, we're going to identify who are the stakeholders in this and what do they want. So let's brainstorm. Who are the stakeholders? Identify the key stakeholders. Identify each stakeholder's goal and desired ends. So let's look at stakeholders. Your partner that just did racial profiling is a stakeholder. The people in the car are stakeholders. The department is a stakeholder. What do you think the department wants? They don't want to be embarrassed, but nor do they want to be known as a department that does racial profiling. See what they're getting at. Uh, how about the, the minority community? How about the community at large that we talked about? I mean, the consequences of racial profiling and being, maybe you're going to get a federal mandate against you. And see, eat, there's, when you really realize the number of people, how about the, your partner's family. How about you and your family and the consequences if you lied and this came out? See, there are so many people and once we realize the number of people are involved in any decision we make, it isn't just you to, in a split second to make a decision. And some of the scenarios, this is a real simple, kind of simple, but it isn't as, as extreme as some of the other ones we're going to be using as we go along in this program. Ethical decision making. Step five. What is it, wh what's the conflict here? See, you can't have an ethical dilemma without a conflict. Now, it could be loyalty and loyalty. What would they be? Loyalty to your family versus loyalty to your partner. Integrity and intrinsic value. Your integrity should be worth everything. And once you violate it, try to get it back in the eyes of people versus loyalty. See, a lot of times, most of these are actually going to turn out to be integrity and loyalty, a conflict of values. A lot of times an intrinsic versus non-intrinsic or even too non-intrinsic. So identify why is there a conflict at all here. Ethical decision making. Now I want you to look at, list the options. You know, evaluate the options. So what are the options? Say nothing. I tell my supervisor. I report it to Eternal Affairs. Lie and say, I saw what they did too, when he writes it up. So identify what the options, and then we're going to look at what is the correct option as we look at ethical decision making. So evaluate the option, you know, which principles are behind this. And we're going to talk about the principles. Uh, apply the ranking order. So what is it? Which are the options and what supports that behavior? Each of them as we look at six. Ethical decisions. So evaluate what is the correct course of action. What should we do, and if we do it, why? So take the time, look at what are the principles behind this as we move forward. And step five, seven, I mean, what is the most reasonable thing to do and why? You know, in other words, what course of action am I going to take and why? Now here I'm going to step off of this assignment, and I, now I want to take you back because the assignment I will give you when it, it will actually ask you to identify of the five standards which standard will apply here and it's going to ask you to take a look and analyze this ethical decision 
in three different ways, one using deontological, one using theological, and one using virtue. So let's do that now. Let's go back to that scenario. Under deontological, why is it wrong what they did? Now remember, the one we're talking about is the one that don't tell the truth. But we can look at both of them. Racial profiling is wrong. Why? Racial profiling is wrong because we treat a certain class of people differently based on their race, not their action. And if we look at the veil of ignorance, it, it could be applied to you or anybody. Lying or not telling the truth is wrong within itself. Kant would say, we don't want a society, we can't trust people. And with law enforcement giving that power and that public trust, we should be able to believe what they say. Now, a lot of you, when you look at theological utilitarianism, are going to say, well, it's a great, that's a good one because if we told the truth, this guy would get away. If we did this, this would happen. Well, let me, it, no, in the great, it's the greater good for the greater number of people and the, the benefit or the, uh, the positive or the, for the society supersedes always or trumps the few or the group. Greatest pleasure. Racial profiling is wrong, and the effect on our society of racial profiling is far worse than the, than the benefit you gathered. Let me give you an example of a story. William Churchill, they broke the code. They knew what the Germans were saying. D-Day's coming up. What do you do? Well, all of a sudden, they realized they got a message that they're going to bomb this town. And we know many people are going to die. But if I do and I evacuate the people, they're going to, say, they're going to realize I broke the code. Now, deontological will say, you have no idea if they'll know or if they, they, you know, maybe they even know already. So the right thing would do is, is warn the people and save the lives. Theological would say, for the greater good would be let the people die because we need that code so our troops and we, you know, will be safer. So over the long term, that's a better. William Churchill went with theological. He did not tell him. And after the war, he told them what he did. And many people died. So we go to the same place both ways. Theological would be it's wrong and we need to tell the truth because the greater good for the greater number of people is not to allow racial profiling. Theological would say no, we should tell the truth also and racial profiling is wrong. How about virtue? Virtue would say lying and racial profiling is against the values of an individual, of a virtuous, honest person of high moral character. So all of the theories as we look at them will all end up in the same place, that of being honest. The last part, now we're going to move you to the final thing. I, this is a Dropbox assignment. And also, po this is going to be posted so you can look at it as a sheet. I have a series of questions I want you to work through on this scenario. And these are... You know, uh, identified, you know, can you act, you know, can you identify what the problem? And I'll put them up, but I'm going to let you, that's posted, and I want you to answer each of these questions and at least a paragraph or more. I want you to post it in the Dropbox, and then you're going to go to a discussion and you're going to discuss this scenario. And I look forward to reading and your comments, and you have a good day.